So the question I want to ask you today is what features of a rapid sequence induction or RSA are you willing to modify because you think they actually might be beneficial for the patient to make those modifications. Now, first of all, a rapid sequence induction is a very specific type of induction to try and prevent aspiration. And it could be used in any situation where there's increased risk of aspiration, such as small bowel obstruction. It could be due to the patient being unfasted, and maybe it's because they've got severe reflux because they've got a you know, incompetent low esophageal sphincter. So for a traditional RSI, you have your patient prepared and ready for the induction. You use thiopentone as a fast-acting hypnotic, succimethonium as a fast-acting relaxant, and then you induce that patient. You make sure you have cricoid pressure. You immediately put a tube down um, as soon as the patient is asleep and then paralyzed, which is really only about 30 seconds. So that way, once the tube is in and the cuff is inflated, there's very little chance of your you know, gastric contents going into your mouth and also down into the, into the lungs. So this is basically the procedure we use for an RSI. The other important feature of this is once you've given the thiopentone and the succimethonium, you don't ventilate the patient. Now this is because there's a theoretical risk that if you ventilate the patient, you might insufflate the stomach and that increased pressure due to increased gas in the stomach will then promote aspiration. Now the disadvantages of not ventilating the patient mean that you've only got a certain amount of, a certain level of oxygen in the lungs, which means that, that the time that you're taking for your muscle relaxant to work and your hypnotic to work means you're taking time away from your safe apnea time and the body's just using this oxygen in the lungs. What I'm gonna suggest is a gentle, very low pressure, successful ventilation of the patient means that you will prolong your safe apnea time with very minimal increasing risk of aspiration. Once I've given the hypnotic and the muscle relaxant, which often these days is propofol and either succimethonium or a large dose of rocuronium, I will still get the patient, have a mask on the patient and still bag them gently. I'm just making sure my pressures aren't above 15 centimeters water, which is probably the barrier pressure of the esophageal sphincter. So there's very little chance of me you know, insufflating the stomach. Additionally, it means that I first of all know that bag mask ventilation is relatively easy in this patient. And second of all, it means that the safe apnea time is prolonged and you know, making sure that there's no collapse of the lungs and I'm still oxygenating and ventilating this patient. Now, if I was to avoid ventilation like the traditional method, it means that I'm using up that safe apnea time by just waiting for that hypnotic and muscle relaxant to work. And also this might be done needlessly. For example, there's a lot of times in, in practice where you have a rapid sequence induction and because you, the patient desaturates quicker, now you've got this problem where you're gonna to have to get that tubing quicker and you'll often turn a reasonably you know, easy or moderately difficult airway into a very difficult airway because now you don't have as much time in, you know, where the sats are absolutely fine and normal to gain airway access with the intubation. So in my opinion, safe, low pressure, careful ventilation of the patient while you're waiting for that muscle relaxant to work, I think is incredibly safe, especially if done carefully, and also gives you a lot of advantages and safety for that patient.